all of that was muted. So anyway, welcome back to 4D, Def's Daily Dose of Dota. I am your host, Defesis, who can now use the microphone. We're going to hop back into this game, continue looking at Misery's support Rubik. It's 18 minutes in, and we have a Song of the Siren coming out here. Ake is going to have to disengage here with Necrophos already falling, but the briefcase will do enough damage as the tier 2 is being contested top lane. We see it takes about three hits to kill the Plague Wards there with that 450 HP. And that really just serves as to give extra time for Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. the melee creep wave to push out a little further. But it will not be enough. The tower will be saved. And Misery would love some company here from the opposing EG side. He'd like to get a spell steal. Instead, he'll be pushing out the wave on his own. We see Bulldog continuing to farm up these two creep camps here. He's presumably going to be going for a four staff, has the staff of wizardry. Four deaths, though, he's probably a little further behind than he would like. And at the 20 minute mark, we see the Naga illusions pushing out into the jungle, scouting. Fear pushing out this bottom lane. He's actually third on the last hit chart for his team. Misery though continuing to push up the lane. He has a thousand gold but instead he's just banking that making sure he has observers and sentries. He did pick up that magic stick at about the six minute mark. And Hani using this swell of two creep waves to push out the tower. It's at two-thirds of its hit points but it may fall unless we see a rotation Gaia's from Zai and presumably Someone else. Bottom tower is Elder Titan attack. has a teleportation scroll, so does Venomancer, so they can contest this. Instead, they're choosing to push out this bottom lane, Dyer's and a tier 2 for a tier 1 would be a mighty Radiant's fine trade. We do have attack. Eidolons, though, coming in Dyer's top to push out is under attack. and repel the wave here. And even a Fade Bolt will not do quite enough to take out the wave. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. One hit. Two hit. Three hits and the plague ward is gone. I'd like to see these a little more forward, just to soak Radiant's up some HP from the tower and give the melee creep wave some more time. That flame break will alert them to Bat Rider's presence. But Arteezy with the exorcism helping to secure that fallen. kill. And Misery will now teleport away back home. He's up to 1200 gold. But more importantly, there's a Radiance up on our Terra Blade. We can see he's getting very close to Arteezy in that first position roll. Crypt Swarm pushing up the top lane. Misery and Loda are ready for a rotation, but it will not come. Instead, it's just a few Eidolons. Arteezy instead using this time to farm up the jungle. Looking at the graphs, even though the kill count is 5 to 10, the deficits are not significant. 7,000. About 6,000 for net worth. That could all turn around Radiant's in the first team fight, though. Is under attack. Bottom lane being pushed out all the way to the tier 3 Dyer's tower, and we tower see several heroes from EG grouping up mid. But instead, Dyer's they'll use the illusions. Has fallen and look to claim their next Roshan kill. And that was Misery with the assistance of a Radiance Terrorblade Illusion getting a kill on that top tower. He's up to 1500 gold. Could be looking for a Blink Dagger. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And I'm not sure Radiance middle tower is under attack. Alliance have any vision in the area. They probably do not suspect this. Or if they do, there's little they can accomplish in the time it will take for this hero to fall. Fear just using his time to zone out the potential attack path through the jungle, getting a little extra farming in. 
and continue Roshan to push out the lane. Has fallen to the dire. Instead, our alliance heroes choose to make a stand up top, push out the lane to the tower until the Naga Sire and Illusions come in. And with the sound of Roshan falling, our heroes for alliance will have to fall back. Arteezy, with this freshly minted Aegis, will port top Radiance middle and repel the lane, attack. being pushed all the way to the tower. With two heroes in tow, Universe looking to scout out who could potentially be here to jump on his carry, Death Prophet. And Fear just continuing to sit in this bottom lane, but with this new rotation from Terrorblade, he may have to flee. Venomous Scale off the mark, and he will hightail it out of there. But, even with drums, Reflection will get off, and Fear tries to teleport away from Loda. But that flaming lasso will secure a kill. And he does get the Poison Nova off. But at rank 2, not quite enough to deal lethal damage to Terror Blade. Very close on Batrider though, 200 HP. Arteezy in the meantime has been pushing out the top lane and Loda just continuing to go back to base after farming Dyer's that up. Bottom tower is under attack. Coming back to Rubik. Radiant's I wanted to take a look at the hero levels attack. here. We've seen him several times go to a lane where there's no one there just to get those extra levels and try and stay relevant. He's at least on par with the silencer and the PPD Radiant support. Are fortified. Fortification trying to prevent this tower from going down, Radiant's but Terrorblade will at least use it denied. to deny. That's a Haste Rune Enigma who was barely able to get away from that first sticky napalm charge by Batrider. Arteezy now choosing to press in towards the mid on this final tier 2 outer tower. Misery, just using the Fade Bolt to push out the wave. He would like to steal some spell to stay relevant, but not if it ends up costing his life. He will instead just linger back. Arteezy being very aggressive Radiant's here. Middle tower is under attack. Has that Lincoln Dyer's Spear, so he'll need some sort of initiation attack. if Misery wishes to steal Crypt Swarm again. Or exorcism. Structures the final 2 2 tower falls without the need of exorcism, attack. meaning it's up for this Radiant's tier 3 tower, tower defense. Loda teleporting back to base. He was pushing out that tier 2 top, which he just Dyer's destroyed. Top tower has fallen. The Radiant's tower goes down. Tower has fallen. He has a reflection ready. Enigma sitting in the back with his BKB. He has everything expended, but still waiting for an opportunity to use the black Dyer's hole. Top tower is and our Rubik attack. sitting very far back. Wasn't able to steal anything yet that fight. And the tier 3 tower will essentially go down for a trade on the tier 2 top. This ward has been up a little while. Go for me. Expiring soon. Would have liked to seen EG drop another ward in the jungle with that tower going down. Doesn't look like they have any on their person. And there's a lasso going off from Bulldog into a Necrofoe ult. Reaper Scythe. Making sure that Enigma's down for 30% longer than normal. Or I believe just 30 seconds more with 6.82. And with the help of that kill, Batrider's going to be picking up the gem. He wants to reclaim his jungle in case there's any wards down, but uh, there's none. Nonetheless, it'll still help him out, assuming he can stay alive to keep it on his team. Ortizzi using this time to just continue to push out the top lane. He is no longer the net worth leader. That goes to Terrorblade who, in addition to his Radiance, has picked up the Manta style. He already has his first ultimate orb. Probably be going for an Eye of Scotty. And going back to our Misery support, he has chosen to pick up the Blink Dagger with his Swell of Gold. Not going for that ultimate stick yet. But, uh, don't really see Rubik's get that much gold for 
Aghanim's Scepter. Instead, Blink Dagger, much better assisting in your initiation, so you can get that Telekinesis off on someone. As many supports choose to get the Blink Dagger as a high priority item. And we just see more farming coming up from PPD. RTZ picking up the Illusion Rune and rotating back mid to defend this tier 2 tower along with three of his EG allies. And now PPD will rotate as well. But there's no push coming. Instead, we see Silencer running back to base and three heroes in the top lane. We have a pause here, but this is a replay. We can fast forward through this. And our Batrider will be magically connected any moment. We have a Dagon coming out from this Necrophos, just hoping to get some burst damage to get people a little lower to ensure a higher probability of a Reaper Scythe successful kill. But Exorcism is back off a of cooldown. Arteezy has a Reaver, a Shiva's, Dyer's and they're looking to claim the first lane of Rax. Terrorblade will have to get back to base. He does. Song of Siren coming out. It will catch Bulldog before he's able to initiate. And it's a two-man black hole on the Rubik Necrophos, but not the Silencer. Instantly canceling it. And Elder Titan will fall to the Reaper's side. But the stolen black hole, those are the spell steals we're looking for. He will lose his life, but we're trading that for a Death Prophet. A fantastic job in Terrorblade. Ends up getting a triple triple kill, clearing out the team. I was looking at those double Aghanim scepters coming out as a result of that fight. That is a big deal. Great illusion micro coming out here from Ake. He's already done his job though. Getting a large amount of net worth in that fight. He's now 4k ahead of Arteezy. And this Terrorblade, Illusion Gaming, starting to become an issue for EG. Outside of Arteezy's Death Prophet carry, they really only have EG's Venomancer picking up now a support 2 position, and he's... looks like he's building into a pipe. Much more of a defensive build. That will help against the Radiance, though, but it won't help kill Terrorblade as we see the pipe is completed now that he resurrects and a rotation coming out from an invisible honey they want to get this kill off of Zai the Dagon almost brings him down instead he will be down for only 55 seconds but it will help them secure that kill on a tier 1 tower and we're gonna take a brief look at the graphs which have started to trend back for Alliance both the net worth and the XP. Misery, just continuing to stand in lane, Dyer's occupy his own lane, make sure he doesn't fall behind on levels. We can hop over to the hero level. See that he's still staying relevant. He's not the lowest of the supports. That title goes to PPD on the support Naga Sire in this game. But the issue at hand is this Terrorblade, who in last fight did secure a triple kill, and things may just go down from there with the Eye of Scotty already completed, and he is almost 4.7k to move towards his next item. Looks like he may go back to base and make a decision on what that'll be now. As a trio of heroes from Alliance continue to farm up the jungle, Bulldog using this time just to scout out along with a fear ward. And we see the choice coming out from Terrorblade. He'll be working on that butterfly. Talisman of Evasion already online. He could easily have that within the next 10 minutes at his rate of farm. Just going to the uh, gold per minute. 750 with the help of that last fight. Going back to our support Rubik. He has no spells, but he's staying low on the deaths, and he has six assists so far. He may want to get back here. 
And he does. Defensive blink immediately. Batrider had already run back to base. Looks like he'll be working on a BKB next. This Aghanim Scepter on the Silencer could be big. Just adding in one second to the duration. But also just getting some extra damage out on all the heroes. With 100% success rate. It's no skill shot. You press the F button and everyone's silenced and they begin to take more damage. Okay, just doing the illusion farming, that illusion gaming, farming up EG's jungle. And we see some excellent wards here out from EG, but not much can be done after losing that fight. We do see a smoke coming out. Misery, they're in the jungle. Batrider's looking for a kill. They see the Elder Titan spirit moving back. They're on the high ground, they may engage here. Just barely holding off as EG instead moves around to their secret shop. They may have sensed that the team was missing, presumably in this area. But Loda, he can run around with confidence. He's tops on the net worth. We see a blink dagger coming out from fear. That'll help him get an initiation on potentially a four or five man poison nova. Could go a long way towards winning EG the next team fight, which seems imminent as both sides grouping up to contend this tier two tower. Ward on the high ground. And a ward covering the top lane. Alliance have excellent vision. They're in commanding control now of the EG jungle. And a smoke coming out from our support, PPD. We'll see if they look to use it away. Or they could save it for later. Meanwhile, Misery, standing back in this fight. He's letting the Batrider do the initiation, be the man on the front line. Be the one who could potentially get caught by the Echo Stomp, not him. They have an excellent combo to set up, as we saw in the last fight. A silence from Silencer interrupting the black hole into a misery steal. Does he detect that they are hot on his trail? It does not appear so. As the Echo Stomp will go off, the Telekinesis not enough to get him away from Enigma, who will claim the kill on him. And another disconnect from Batrider, which of course we can just zip right through one of the benefits of not having to watch these games live. For any who did watch ESL New York, there were a significant number of disconnections and technical difficulties. He's back in the game. And we're gonna get back into it. With that kill, Alliance backing off from the jungle, EG putting down a ward of their own and using this time to desperately get a little bit of farm on their heroes. They are starting to lose the net worth battle. It's swung into Alliance's favor and held steady for about the last 10 minutes. But the next Roshan Dyer's is up. This is number three. Is the first two being claimed by EG. This will be Cheese. Exorcism being committed for this. They know how big of an issue this Roshan could be if it fell in the hands of a Terror Blade. So they're going to have four heroes here. Rubik not quite up yet. Roshan has fallen and with the, the assistance death. of Death Prophet's ultimate, Immortality. Roshan falls very quickly. Enigma choosing to pick up the Aegis that time. Not sure they have a better Aegis carrier. Dyer's structures are fortified. Especially since Dyer's if Death Prophet dies, is under attack. exorcism ends early. But the illusion gaming, you saw it, getting the tower down low, almost into deny range. But with Misery back up, we see another rotation coming out from our heroes. Also up to 2k gold, he is having a great game for a Rubik support. Usually you can't expect to get more than your Blink Dagger, your Arcane Boots, you should be very happy. But he might end up completing the Aghanim Scepter in this game. Batrider, 
Still has the gem. Using the Firefly to just deny some vision there. As Terrorblade is chased away by Arteezy. With the help of the Manta though, they will not be able to secure the kill. But instead Loda loops around and grabs a bounty room. And continues to push out the lane. Meanwhile, Misery just rotating around with his Hani carry. Seeing if they can catch out a solo hero from EG rotating into the lane. As Misery looks to rotate again. Meeting up with Bulldog and Aki. Butterfly coming out for our Terra Blade at the 38 minute mark. He's getting very big. Almost 6,000 net worth now ahead of Arteezy's Death Prophet. The next fight will be very telling if they can actually successfully bring down Terra Blade. Or if the Illusion Gaming will just eventually push into their base. Dyer's top tower is under attack. As it is now. With that butterfly online, top tower has it will take down the tower and significantly get this top ranged barracks down. Venomancer, not the best choice for clearing up illusions and creep waves. He has a low attack damage, but they're using what they got. Misery still standing in the mid lane. Going back to the hero level, we see level 14. Now two levels ahead of the support PPD. And once again, Dyer's just sticking with his carries, sticking Dyer's with Silencer, tower has Bulldog, for some potential initiation with Loda on the high ground. Arteezy trying to push out this top lane. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Pushing lane is very important now for their team. With Naga Siren not being a carry in this position, they know they're going to have to get something done. Otherwise, the Terra Blade Illusions will continue to force into their base. And that's a double damage rune. Terra Blade destroying that bottom tower Radiance with Illusions tower alone. Is under attack. And they're are going to have to defend this exorcism Dyer's coming out from Arteezy. Where's our Rubik? He's sitting at the attack. back. He did get hit by that Echo Slump. Stomp. Dyer's middle tower has Wanted to fallen. say Echo Slam. But we don't have an Earth Shaker in this game. But we have a Hani with a Blink Dagger looking to pursue on someone. Song of the Siren will have to be used defensively. Gemma Truesight has been dropped. That's an interesting play there. PPD. Perhaps hoping they wouldn't notice it's there. Because if you look at it there, you don't see it. But Batrider will pick it up. Two gems now. And Misery will come down mid lane with his Batrider. He's up to 3,600 gold now. He may be looking to see if he can sneak in an Aghanim Scepter. Terrorblade with Boots of Travel. Able to teleport in and get a significant amount of pressure on our EG squad. And what started a minute ago at this Tier 3 tower has now come up to the Tier 3 mid for EG. We see our heroes lying in wait. Batrider looking for someone. Rubik standing in the back. Not being overly aggressive. Doesn't need to spell steal anything yet. He knows if a fight happens, he'll be looking to try and steal one of the ultimates anyway. And as mentioned earlier, they have some excellent counter initiation on that black hole with the silence. But our heroes, as four, now five, with Batrider in tow, will just choose to retreat into the jungle. Onto the high ground they're hiding. Hoping someone will bait to come out and push the lane. Instead, Loda just pushes back in. Conjure image. Presumably, he'll send one into the top lane. 
and EG have been really bottled up into their base here. Dyer's bottom barracks are under attack. Dyer's bottom we saw the bottom fallen. range go down from that terror blade. Just so much damage with the butterfly, it takes him a while to be killed. As we see Rubik rotating down to push out this lane with the Fade Bolt, and although it's not that great of an ability in terms of raw damage wise, once the lanes start to stack up, there is no limit for the amount of targets it can hit. There is a 4% reduction though. He m we may see him pick up that Aghanim Scepter. As we see Silencer working on a refresher. Hani on Necrophos already has his. Interesting outfit he has. But the game can be told by the net worth chart. Terrorblade, 34,000 net worth, 10,000 ahead of RTZ. Will they be able to take him down in this fight? RTZ spending the exorcism. There goes the global silence. Rubik sitting here. Aghanim's Scepter will almost claim the kill on RTZ. It will now. He's down for 90 seconds. Venomancer getting picked up by Telekinesis. Stealing the Plague Ward. Not a bad idea since the fight was being disengaged on already. Black Hole was probably not going to fall. And another successful defense of the tier 3 high ground. Alliance in a very commanding position. Trading just Hani, who didn't use his refresher there, in exchange for that position 1 Death Prophet dying here and that extra kill on Venomancer. And Rubik does pick up the Aghanim Scepter. We see it flying in now. For anybody unfamiliar, it does uh, increase the duration of it, but more importantly, five second cooldown on Scepter. Five seconds, every five seconds, he'll be looking to steal something in these fights. Black hole steals will be great, but with that Aghanim Scepter, you can really turn a fight around consecutively. But instead, he'll rotate with his carries, using the Plague Wards to just zone, get some excellent vision, so they can claim this fourth Roshan. And there's not much EG can do. They're having to contend with these two lanes. They had two heroes die. They probably know this is coming. An alliance, Roshan great vision with these plague wards. <laughs> and the Aegis going to the Rubik. Not very typical for a support to get the Aegis, but this will allow him to get better positioning in fights, be a little more aggressive. Maybe be a little more aggressive towards stealing that black hole. Stealing something like a Song of the Siren, a Poison Nova. Instead, he's just using his Plague Wards to zone, see the transitions and rotations coming out from our EG heroes. Just perfect vision. Loda knows the attempted loop around before it comes. We see our Rubik just lying in wait. They have Aegis and Cheese here. She's going to Hani. And Terrorblade just continues farming away. There's a BKB online now for him. He's very close to six slotted. At 9,000 gold. He can get whatever he wants at this point. Definitely doesn't need 9,000 for buyback. But instead it looks like they'd like to get something done here. Hani standing way back along with Ake. And the Rubik now becomes a frontline hero with that Aegis of the Immortal. 
But we hear a Song of the Siren coming out with the flank from PPD. The fight's coming out. Global Silence prevents Enigma from doing his black hole. He's trying to be kept alive, but falls instead. And we see Misery. He's in the middle of it all. He'll die to a Poison Nova. But he has Aegis. The stomp slightly off-timed there. And a double buyback will have to result from Elder Titan and Enigma falling. That's a very, very big teleportation away there. I think he got down to 200 HP. But there was a kill on Terra Blade here. Probably the first fight that EG felt like they may have won with the Terra Blade, but two buybacks coming out from Elder Titan and Enigma and Arteezy falling as well. Not to mention the dirt poor PPD. Looking at the graphs though, we see the net worth just continuing to edge up a little higher for Alliance. Although it looks like it plateaus there once you factor in the buyback. Just more of an extension for Alliance's lead. Misery very thankful to get away there with his life. However, he knew that there weren't many stuns coming out for EG and it's always key to have the teleportation scroll. You miss 100% of the TP's home that you don't take because you didn't want to spend the 100 gold. Come on, guys. Just continuing to push out the mid lane and then hopping back. Plain defensive. He's doing a great job. Level-wise, level 19 compared with level 14 from PPD. It's these kinds of just occupying the lane to absorb some more XP and then getting out if you sense pressure. Those are the kinds of things that are pushing him ahead of the EG support. Just continuing to occupy the mid lane, stay near his cores. So fear having to be very aggressive to get those venomous gales off. Could have been punished for it. And it looks like there'll be another tier 3 defense. They'd like to claim this melee bar barracks. The Terrorblade Illusion's pushing the back, though. Echo Stomp going off on our Rubik into a Song of the Siren. This is some fantastic initiation here. They BKB. Who does he want a black hole? He only sees one hero. A very quick blink back from Rubik. Buyback from our Terrorblade. Might as well. He had over 10,000 gold there. And the Exorcism almost claiming Rubik's life. But instead they're forced back. Still has 8,000 gold. He can do whatever he wants. Could pick up Divine Rapier. We may still see it. But above all, the melee barracks still stands. And with PPD falling down for another 48 seconds, we may see a counter push coming out from our alliance team. Terra Blade just continuing to push out. He wants to make something of the buyback. EG all clumping up in base. And they will have to see if they can hold the defense that is almost imminent. But with that, we're going to use this pause to take a break. That would be what I consider the end of the mid-game. We are well past it. 52 minutes into the game, we have a six-slotted Terrorblade with 8,000 gold on his hands. Everyone's fighting together. Even our Rubik has done an excellent job this game, keeping up with the levels, keeping up with farm. He has an Aghanim Scepter, more than most Rubiks can say. I think the win rate for Rubiks with Aghanim Scepter is upwards of 70%. So we're going to take a la relaxing music break. I'll be back after this.